Do you want to see some shotguns? Blood. This shotgun unleashes carnage like nothing else so far. Brought to you by developer Monolith, this is the first shotgun to offer an alternate fire mode. Switching between single and double shots is a tactical joy. It's a more dynamic weapon and the exceptional sound design makes you want to shoot even more. The gun's akimbo power-up is a particular highlight, giving you that ultimate badass feeling. At first glance, the model doesn't look like much on screen, but it's animated very nicely. The projectile is set up perfectly, either two tight shots or one single more expansive spread. You decide depending on the situation. Impacts on the environments and enemies are excellent, with real depth of variety and sound. I remember as a kid I had to turn the volume down because of the way these enemies screamed and staggered around when being shot. My parents would overhear this and think what on earth was going on. The death animations, particularly those zombies, is comically and bloody glorious too. If any developer can make a modern 3D version of this gun, it would be a 10 out of 10 masterpiece. Uh, stick around and see what Monolith did in the sequel. Doom 64. This is a nice one has a nice sharp sound and takes down the lesser enemies in one shot at close to medium ranges, and has excellent punch to it. The lack of reload animation is comparable to Quake Shotgun, only this is a 2D render and feels like a bit of a letdown in that respect. It's also not the greatest looking thing either. You're getting pretty much everything that Doom offered with regards to impacts on enemies and environments, so it's all pretty decent. It's nice to shoot, but not pushing the boundaries at all for a game released in 1997. Especially considering, as a kid, I walked into the store and paid £60 for this game. Doom 64's Super Shotgun gains a significant extra point for the sheer impact value it has. Never has it felt so good to bust up some pinkies. That boom sound effect, the player knockback and spread of deadly pellets adding massively to the feeling of raw power as you cut down multiple foes or get up close and personal. Mmm, I love it! Sadly, we still don't get the much-loved reload animation, or even the sound of shells hitting the ground. At least the reload click sounds pretty sweet. Doom 64 shines brightest with this weapon in your hands, and is worthy of high praise. A solid 8 out of 10 for this atmospheric and just jaw-droppingly deadly weapon. From LucasArts, it's Outlaws. The single tenge sounds great and does a basic job as your first shotgun. This game is like playing a cartoon and there's not a lot going on really. For a game that sports three shotguns, I was hopeful they would be more fun to use. Unfortunately, this game is way more fun using the standard rifle to pick off enemies. Animations are pretty weak too, a shame considering its cartoony aesthetic. The sawn off shotgun is a bit of a letdown. It's not useful to use in most situations, only good for point blank encounters. And even then, it doesn't feel satisfying to shoot. The double ten should have been a beast. 
but it's not much more fun to use than the standard shotgun, really. You don't get that almighty feeling like with previous games. Overall, these are not great weapons to fire, and it's nothing to look back on with joy. Redneck Rampage! Oh god, this is a really bad shotgun. Just doesn't do it in any category. It feels paper light and is well below par in every way. You're really missing nothing here, and I won't waste any more of your time. Shadow Warrior. Kawabunga. So, I have a little confession to make. I never actually played this game until a month ago. Somehow in 1997, I just missed this. Probably because of the release of the Nintendo 64, and in the next two games you'll see why. I was just completely engrossed in what that machine was doing at the time. The riot gun here is a genuine original weapon that is a joy to use once you get to grips with its shot cycles. You will find lesser enemies frequently require many shots to take down, which would normally be annoying, but this isn't designed to be a pinpoint one-shot kill weapon. The model looks great and is animated nicely with some decent sound effects on top too. The projectile is its strong suit here. It unleashes a great amount of pain with satisfying effects in the world. Impacts on enemies could be better, but they are of a good standard for a build engine game. It's a good shotgun overall and really worth a look. Turok Dinosaur Hunter. The arrival of this game on the Nintendo 64 really did bring in a new wave of 3D first person shooting, and I was absolutely engrossed in it. The shotgun here feels very light, like it's made of toilet tubes or something, but it's still fun nonetheless. Good for short to long range, and each shot is satisfying to land on your enemy, who will display expressive death animations, which is really nice to see. The model looks good and sounds decent. The reload animation is done extremely well, very smooth, and you have the choice of two projectile types which have different effects on the enemies. Extremely nice. It's still just as fun to play today as it was back then. The auto shotgun is a case of rinse and repeat, with a bit faster fire rate. All the previous comments from the first shotgun apply here. It's neither more or less fun in my opinion, as what you lose in satisfying pump animations, you gain in higher fire rate and the added impact that creates. So, good all round, and the highest rated 3D shotguns in this series so far. GoldenEye 007. What an absolute legend of a game this is. The automatic shotgun has great punch to it, and the impacts on enemies in this game are still better than most modern day shooters in my opinion. <laughs> The model looks basic and proper gun reload animation is the only thing lacking here. The sound, projectile and impact on enemies is just top notch. We desperately need an official remaster of this game, as the only legit way to play is as you see here, via original N64 hardware. And yeah, sorry about the bad image quality. Unless we do get some kind of remaster, we are going to be leaving one of the greatest FPS games of all time in the shadows. There's also another shotgun in the game, but only accessible via a cheat unlock, so just showing it off here for all time's sake. 
The gunplay in this game was absolutely sublime when it was first released, and it occupied many, many hours of me and my friends' time playing multiplayer. It might look simple by today's standards, but the excellent impact on enemies and the punchiness this has makes it a great shotgun to fire. Chasm, the Rift. They said this game was a poor man's quake back in the day. And that's a compliment to this game. It is nowhere near quake, and the gunplay reveals that. In all departments, there is nothing satisfying about firing these guns. The shotguns in this game are some of the worst to feature in any true 3D game so far. Chasm's double barrel shotgun is also a chore to use. It doesn't add anything much to the gameplay at all. The only thing these two guns kind of gets right is the basic projectile setup. Everything else is way below par. Avoid, avoid, avoid. That's all for this episode. See you in the next one. Hit subscribe for more. Mmm, I love it.